Hi ladies, I was just sitting there and now I'm sitting up here. How crazy, how modern. <laughs> As you are. I'm extremely I put down modern. my phone. I'm not going to take any I'm calls. wearing a diaper. She's wearing a just diaper. in case anybody wants uh, to. She was nervous. I was a little um, nervous. Yeah. I thought maybe I'd have an accident. Um. <laughs> so, let me tell you just... Um, let me relay why the woman sitting here is cool. I know, because in case you had any doubts, which I actually didn't. But she was and remains an American icon, which is a term we do not use loosely, especially in the fashion business, but has somehow managed the feat of being one of the mo most relatable women you'll ever meet. She would say that it's her life, but in this context, it is her brand. So, see what I did there? Yeah. So let's ask Brooke Shields about Brooke Shields. <laughs> Because you don't have enough of me. There's not it's enough not of you. We need enough more. of me around for 48 years. <laughs> 40, 48. Oh, look, but doesn't she look good? Oh, God. Oh, well, gosh. You, you, you still got it, kid. So, okay. Oh, good. Go on. Well, no, you're ready to go. Keep, no, you've got a question. I'm just going to have a nap. Feel it. Hmm? Yeah, you're, you're never quiet. So no, just wait. it's so, pointless. So, so you are, you uh, are in the unique position of having been a brand since you were a little tyke. I mean, you could say baby, some could say 11. Um, but tell me about the first instance you, you knew you had to manage it and then how it evolved as you've gotten older. I, th I think the, the interesting thing was we never set out to be a brand. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> Not from birth. something from birth. <laughs> Mommy, I want to be a brand. It's uh, uh, <laughs> in uterus. <laughs> in the uterus, I was a brand. Um, it, it was something that sort of did evolve, and it didn't really have any path to it. You know, I mean, at one point, I had hair dryers that had my name on them, and, and dolls, and, and things, and there was really sort of no continuity to it. And it was because we didn't know. It was an era, in an era where you, we weren't planning. We were just happy to get the next job, and that meant we could buy a house, or that meant we could buy a car. and. Um, and the industry was very different. It wasn't until really after college and, I mean, sadly, recently, that I started to appreciate how brands are formed and how they, what makes them last. And, how they're maintained. And how they're maintained yeah. and who you need to have surrounding you and behind them. Right. It's a, it's a, you know, you have to have people you trust. And also you have to, there is also part of it that I don't think if I set out to do it, I don't, it's like saying, you know, we're going to take some iconic photos. It's, you don't set out okay. to take iconic <laughs> photos. They become iconic photos or not. And I, it wasn't until I was older that I started to have to, I started to uh, navigate my life. I had to undo some of the, because at one point I had so many, there were, you didn't know what I was, you know, and it was sort of, was I an actress? Was I a model? Was I an, I, this name brand, what was right. I? And it wasn't until I got older that I just started to want to have certain things. And it's taken until just now, really. Just before she walked in? Just, you had just an epiphany. when I was back there. <laughs> I had an epiphany. We really have this room. Can you hear, hear, hear the laughter? They're, they're can you just, it's <laughs> roaring. I can hardly hear myself. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, somebody likes us. Somebody likes us. <laughs> no, but, yeah, but it's like how... Um, yeah, speaking of navigating it, because you you're na you have represented various things throughout your life, and how do you come to... Because I think there's... Certainly you can endorse things, certainly you can... But I do feel like, because I've actually weirdly... I met Brooke briefly on a dance floor, love to say that, many years ago, and she was a bit of a silly dancer like I was, and I thought, I like you. And then we only really met properly again, like under a year ago, and it really struck me that she's just kind of a dude, like a cool person and more want, literally one of the more approachable women that I've met ever in any industry in any incarnation and is it because I mean I think you I assume you grew up a decent human um, but is it because also you've been through a lot of that fire that now that you just kind of you just settle in your skin more I just feel really lucky to still be uh, here to still be right. to still have opportunity to I mean you know over basically over four decades I mean it is true I was 11 months old when I started modeling and you know did I say you know I want to model <laughs> it didn't exactly happen that way um, did you gurgle that you wanted to model? <laughs> did it, it was yeah I had a little sign um, <laughs> and uh, um, 
And it wasn't, so I, I, I've felt lucky every time I've gotten another job or every time that I'm, and in, in hindsight, when I look at the longevity, I think it's because I did get an education and I, right. and I made sure that there were other things in my life except just how I looked or how, and it's an interesting thing when you are so used to endorsing other people's products, mm -hmm. it's awkward to endorse yourself in the same right. way. And, and it's, uh, I've had to get used to that. And as long as I can be involved in the creative process of whatever the project is, then I feel the best. Because I'm used to putting on other people's clothes, right. taking them off, putting my jeans on, and, and going. I mean, I spent a huge portion of my life like that. And how do you, like, have you pushed yourself out of things that may have been expected for you? in terms of, of opportunities or roles or because I, I think that now it's funny just even like reading your formal bio you know the other day because when I did some research no but I was like you've just done so many things but each one of those things seems to have come naturally to you but it's not the typical it feels like you like opportunities come up and you've been curious about something and you've grabbed it I think I've just never let fear in inhibit me I, I feel a lot of the you know I, it's also not a, uh, not all the waters were warm Right. to me. You know, when I got out of college, I thought, oh, great, they're going to love me because now I'm educated. <laughs> That's what we I want as a smile now. <laughs> um, usually doesn't work that way. Um, but it was, so, you know, the, an industry that had been very hot for me had cooled to me. So it was a matter of, I was, was I just going to sit and wait and keep, I mean, we get rejected countless times, all the time. And it's a matter of saying, okay, fine, I'm gonna go over here. Right. And if I, in fact, am a performer or an actress, or, you know, if, then go where you're able to do it. You know, I was lucky enough that Broadway invited me back. Uh, there have been times that I have hadn't had a television show, couldn't get a movie, you know, wasn't young enough to be in the covers of magazines or whatever it was. You know, I chose that time to write a book. It's not, and it sounds sort of like, and then I wrote a book. Um, I, it, she's a heavy smoker. She's a heavy <laughs> imaginary a heavy smoker. smoker. Very heavy smoker. Yeah. Um, no, but it is a, it's a matter of making opportunity for yourself and, and staying active, staying the course, keep working, where, whether you are, I mean, I would do these underground comedy things with my friends, and, you know, eventually I got to meet someone who was an amazing writer who, and it's, it's about connecting yourself right. and not just waiting. The ooh, pick me feeling yeah. sucks. And, it, yeah. and, and, it, and you have to, there has to be a part of, it is a part of this business. And also I think you, writing the book, as you mentioned, um, was uh, about part, part PPD, the acronym, postpartum depression. Um, was was a real game changer, I think, in terms of, in terms of like the the, the stature that you, you already had stature in this way, but you had stature and respect in the in the in the other way. And I have a, a good girlfriend who had a terrible time um, with uh, PPD, and she was like, "Can I write to Brooke? You know what I mean?" And 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 people still do that because not only was it an honest and amazing uh, piece of writing, but people feel like that they can talk to you about that. I I think I've been lucky. Um by being around for so long, but also I have, I haven't lied, you know. I mean, and you know, did saying I was a virgin forever haunt me and still does? Yes, <laughs> you know. One day, one day she'll lose her virginity. It. My yeah. my daughter was IVF, so jury's still out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, think about that one for just, just a minute. You got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have some manuals for you in the back. Um. Um, but it, it, you know, I, um, I have been a part of the of people's consciousness for so long and over so many different for so many different reasons, and I've managed to just be honest in the good times and the bad, and not shy away from it not being so pretty, and not shy away from the scary parts. And that book. It came at an important time for people. It right. was. It happened to have been me. People right. have been suffering from postpartum depression for forever, and it was just that someone whose life they thought was so perfect, was perfect. was obliterated. Just like us, without cheapening it. But and, that sort of feeling that people can go like, oh, it's like ducks on a pond, you know, and you can like see the legs sometimes, yeah. and it's like that. <laughs> Oh, she gets that too because she's a human. And, and it was yeah. just, I needed to take responsibility f f as a mother for my daughters. I was terrified. I'm one that never shies away from anything that, that I'm afraid of. So I, I just knew that I needed to take responsibility for it. And, 
and get the word out there, you know, and it, right. it, um, it ended up being a positive, a positive, oh, positive thing. Very much. And how, how does raising two young girls uh, factor into your sort of day to day and your priorities now? You never feel like you've got it figured out. You never <laughs> feel like it's people say, how do you balance it? it? You're never balanced. I don't, I think working mothers, working parents, you're always going to feel guilty about something. And I think it's, you have to, I just keep the communication open with my children and I like the fact that the image that I'm also giving them or this, this, this person that I'm presenting to them is a working person. And I'm still very involved in, in their lives, obviously. I mean, I you know, take them to school and do their homework. I mean, it's, I'm in the, yeah. the day today, but I also have... You're going to produce I things on your own. Go to, uh, yeah. Yes, I go to work. And, um, and it was, it's, it's in my daughter asked me this morning, she, I don't know, she sort of turned into my agent or something this morning. She said, <laughs> she said the 10-year-old, she goes, so, you going to the Today Show? I said, yeah. She goes, this is good. <laughs> I was like, "Are you a little agent in training? She's What's a the matter?" This one, you know, but yeah. be, it's it's important it's, that my young women, <laughs> the young women in my life, realize that they can be professionals. They can earn the living. They can they can use their brains, and they and it's important. It's just important. So maybe, you could, maybe you should make some money out of her. Sounds like she's ready. <laughs> she is just, I don't know. The, the, the little one is the one that sort of, you try to take her picture and she says, no, I cannot. <laughs> and that's always the picture that the, like Bruce Weber wants. <laughs> you know, the other one's trying to smile too hard, like, <laughs> tries really hard. I'm like, just don't do that with your face. <laughs> and the, and and the little one is, and you know, get stuck. my little one is like the angry, skinny little girl. And I'm like, oh my God, that's yeah. the one they're going to want. <laughs> so off brand. <laughs> Uh, Eat a burger. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, how do you approach like, in terms of because you, you, you're such a Renaissance woman, Brooke? No, but um, how, how do you pro approach acting roles now? Because it's been interesting the roles you've taken, but I think that you have so many stories to tell personally that you have done sometimes and and maybe you're going to work on again. I always feel lucky when I do get an acting job. <laughs> um, I really do. I'm thinking, oh, yay. Uh, it it uh, I do have more. I, I think I. There's certain roles that appeal to me more, and there are certain things that maybe I would have thought was sexy or cool when I was younger, and they're sort of, I don't really have the need, need to do them anymore. I definitely feel that I just am starting to really become an actress, because for so long, all my acting was just about being liked. So, right. show up on time, be polite, you know, be the good girl, you know, and, and I think that that was what I, I thought was the most important. And the craft of it, I didn't really spend a lot of time on it because I was either in school or I was working. And, and it's not until these sort of basically the two places, both comedy and, and when I did lipstick, it was the first time I felt mature. Right. You know, and, that, and to me, comedy is where I am the most comfortable. Sad because you're not funny. I know, yeah. but the writing, it's all about the writing. I mean, dream, dream big, you know. Um, <laughs> I've been, still got the ducks and the thing, the feet still image. Got the ducks I still have no feet. idea what you meant. And metaphors are mixed. They did. They, <laughs> anyway. they know. Um, <laughs> you've also been very successful of late um, in, in TV hosting and The View and, and Today's show. Um, would, would you like to do more of that? Be sort of a brook of all trades? I, I fought um, being well known or recognized or a celebrity or famous or any word. I fought, fought it for a while and I wanted to be under the radar and I wanted to, I wanted to be small and I wanted to just be, be this quiet actress in indie movies and, and it, it turns out I would never get parts in films like that because my face was too recognizable and, and instead of hating it and thinking it was some sort of burden, I, I tried to embrace it and I started to create some of jobs and roles of my own and so I can, and again, Broadway welcomed me back. But the actual TV co-hosting has been the, it's the first time that I've ever felt completely free to be myself mm. and use my dopiness and my education and my opinions and my, and, right. and it's the first time I feel uninhibited and I probably, I mean, I had to have kids first, my mother had to die first. I mean, I, I look back, I'm looking yeah. at these things and I'm thinking these are all the, the sort of milestones that have allowed me to be just here. 
Yeah, and so I go out there in the morning and I'm not scared and I'm not, I do my homework. And I like that, I like homework, I like. It, it's weird that you sort of, I mean, you should always be yourself, but I think as you get older and more established and obviously everything that you've gone, you've experienced, you sort of earn the right to be yourself and you become more yourself, like more well, goofy, I think more, you're never, you know. You don't learn that being yourself is good enough. Yeah until much later yeah. because we are always trying to either be somebody else or we, we look up to someone that's what we want to be that's what we want to look like that's what strive, we want to be strive strive yeah. and it and you know i mean striving is always good but it it hadn't been until i sort of turned around and sort of started looking at my strengths rather than trying to find strengths in other people and mm. emulate them yeah and and it's just like it's like an exhalation it's like, oh <laughs> Okay. And it saves a lot of time. It sure does. It does. So, um, sort of lastly, and I'll open up to questions from you lovely ladies. Um, what are your sort of professional priorities now? Uh, I, it's finding a, a steady job that, <laughs> period, <laughs> and scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In New York City where you're not leaving. And yeah. my work here is done. Um, at finding a place where I belong, a community that I can be a part of, whether it's uh, I would love to get back on television. I, um, I am truly enjoying the hosting, but I really want to get back into situation comedy again. I'm trying to create a world in which I can live in the city, not go away for months at a time, mm -hmm. be with my children, and also have a job. Cool. I mean, it sounds so. I have. I, like that. I just did yeah, that just, for you just then. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. That was welcome. so nice of you. You're so welcome. Um, okay. Oh, look, that hand went right up. So good. I like that. I like that gutsy go ahead attitude. We worked together on Lipstick Jungle. I don't oh. know if you remember. I made your kids' food. <laughs> um, question for you What do you think about the whole transition to digital? Would you be interested in doing some digital shows? And also, I'm curious, who was the very first actress that you saw that impacted you in um, a movie? Regarding digital, I, you know, I was very, very comfortable with film. You know, I, I liked it, I liked the process, I enjoyed it, and I was a bit scared at first. But there is so much to do with digital, and the pace is so exhilarating, and you you can get a lot more done, especially in television with, with it, and now the quality is becoming less, uh, it started off more compromised, but now that's getting better. So I, I, you know, I'm, I just have to try to keep up with the times no matter what it is. No, I'm thinking more of like internet programming and stuff oh, like oh, that. Oh, well, you know what, I, uh, I'm, yes, I've had some of the best fun ever in, I, I did Laura's show, but it, it, yes, <laughs> but it was, there's a freedom in it. Um, there's something really nice about, you know, you get into the politics of networks and it's, and it can get really crazy, but there's a, because it's an entire world, you can do so many more. Um, the webisodes are, are, are great. The amount of, the amount that you can pack in is great. I have yet to find the content that I, the medium is great. The content I have yet to, to find. The first actress I ever was obsessed with, Meryl Streep. I, uh, I'm sorry? Street film? Oh, God. Oh, Lord. I mean, you know, all for different, like every single time she was in a film, I would, I would say, that's my favorite film. You know, and I went to like doing Sophie's Choice. I got to meet her and she kept the accent. And I was like, oh, that's what real actresses do. They stay, stay in character all the time. <laughs> I was like, no way could I mess with that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that was the first time I, I got to meet her, and it was an indelible impression. Ladies, I saw her at the hands. Oh, Red, over there. Hi. Um, so just being an icon of um, you know beauty and fashion, and knowing um, the pressures that what women are up against today, and it's so apparent how comfortable you are in your skin. I do know that from waiting outside an hour and a half of, after your Broadway play, and you came out from Adam's family with not a stitch of makeup on, and you were so lovely and so like you know, welcoming and, and, and nice to talk to, but what would be like your advice to, to women today and how, um, you know, how do, we ma how do we maintain our confidence? And well, I, I, that's very sweet. I'm sorry it took an hour and a half I know, to I mean, get out. I mean, I'm sure I was doing hour, some yeah. thing or commercial or something I backstage. I somebody I'm like waiting that. an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> or it could have taken that long just to get that makeup off yeah, um, my face. Maybe. but. You know, again, it's sometimes I feel funny giving people advice because I feel like I'm constantly learning. 
Um, but I will, I will say that the, the sooner you start to celebrate your differences and really be honest about what you're passionate about and be honest about what your capabilities are in, in so far as what, what is gonna make, what is the job, what is the world that you want, you are going to wake up and be happy that you get to be in. And I think it's so hard. I think physically we are so, we, I think we say we're, we're advancing, but I think simultaneously we're telling people they're not good enough and we can fix you. And, 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 and whether it's plastic surgery or whatever it is, listen, I've seen it make people very, very happy and I'm, I fall for it. But um, I think the message behind it is that we're not young enough or we're not this or I need to, you know, fill this or do this, and and it's really hard not to become susceptible to it. And I was at a photo shoot the other day, and it is a photographer I've worked with for about 15 years. And <laughs> legitimately, I went over to him and said, "Oh, what's that thing? Um, it must be in the film or the digital area." I said, "It must be the film. It must be the film." And he looked at me and he said, "Oh, honey." And of course, it was my wrinkles. And I legitimately thought that there must have been something wrong with the film. And, and it was funny, but it was also, I thought, oh my God, you know, this, I have to start really getting my mind around it because I don't think of myself as 48. <laughs> and my husband will have to say, you know, I'll read a script and I'll say, oh, I can play that character. He's like, honey, they're 28. I'm like, oh no, but I understand her. And I, it's me in like, 10 yeah. years. <laughs> Anybody, but it's, I think, but I like the idea that I feel so young, and I like the idea that it's just now. If I could impart to my daughters or anybody, I would say, I want them to be confident. I want them to, I start them off, I've already started them off. When you shake someone's hand, you look them in the eye. This is your space. You command that. We're used to shying away or being humble or this, and and it's, I, I think it's time for us all, and we don't have to be um, belligerent about it. We can just be confident, and the sooner you concentrate on how to become confident and focus on what's positive, the quicker I think people will soar in every area of their life. Word. Um, any, what, what? You're so hip hop. I am straight. <laughs> so. Uh, one last one, and we'll keep it brief because we've got to wrap up, but she's in the old blimey, there's two, you can fight to the death for it. Uh, wherever you can reach, honey. You, I saw your foot. You, and then if there's anything, maybe, maybe scurry backstage or something. Yeah, we'll work it out. Hi. Hi, Brooke, how are you? Um, I have a question. My question is, most artists that I read about or know about or hear about, they are very comfortable being behind the camera, and then when they have to come out and do an interview, they seem to be very un uncomfortable. But just following you and your life, it seems like it was the opposite. I know maybe it's because you started out very young. You were a child actor. When did you find you, when did you feel that you found your authenticity to really be yourself? You mentioned earlier about being on The View. Um, was that a turning point for you, or did it happen when you started having a family? when you start to real, you know, become, own, own who you really are. I think also it's, it's hard for, it's hard for people, you know, many actors, because it's where their safety zone is, is in front, but within a very protected area. And that's what, when they're artists and that's who they are. And this, the public part of it really doesn't, it doesn't come into them, come in, come into it for them. And I think that it's really hard to push these people into doing it, and yet we expect it. And we expect them to be then charming in front of camera or, I mean, in an interview or anything like that. And I have never known anything else. And I didn't covet it when I was a, a child. I don't... Um, I don't covet it either. I don't, the attention is not something that I've ever craved. Uh, so just being myself was always something that I would try to be. But it really wasn't until, and I don't, it wasn't just doing talk shows or anything. It was having children. It was losing both of my parents. It was getting divorced and remarrying and getting sick. All of these things that just were so much more profound than attention being given to me. Those were the things that, that built up. And finally, I, it's a, it's a, I don't have the time anymore. You know, I don't have the time to be, you know, I don't, it's, it takes a lot of energy to be inauthentic. 
it's so much easier to just be yourself and just hope for the best. <laughs> yes. Thank On you. On that note, thanks all. Um, thank you, Brooke Shields. <laughs>